Intel has been causing a buzz in the desktop enthusiast scene with the release of their Alder Lake 12th generation chips. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the i5-12600K, which I think on the surface looks really good when we look at the price point. We're getting 10 cores, 16 threads for a street price, at least what I can see it's available in stock for, for 320 US dollars. And in Australia, this chip will come under 500 Aussie dollars. Now, Intel did make an MSRP of 289 USD. So the street price for this chip is coming in a little bit higher than that of MSRP. But we did see that also with the launch of the Ryzen 5 5600X, which a lot of gamers flocked to to get AMD's latest architecture which had their IPC gains and I feel like a lot of people will gravitate towards the 12600K due to what it offers coupled with DDR4 memory and an entry level Z690 motherboard. So without wasting any more time let's see if this price justifies the performance and the first title we're going to pull up here is CSGO which was the most interesting for me because it does show even minor differences between all types of CPUs and here we can see the 11th gen CPUs lagging quite a bit behind both the 12th gen and AMD's latest Ryzen 5 5600X as well as 5800X and the 5950X. Now the 5800X is the gaming champion on AMD's side and I feel like with Windows 11, with some of these updates going on, I feel like the single CCD module six and eight cores do fare better than the 5950X. Now I will quickly interlude and talk about why I test at 1080p lower settings versus just maxing out every setting in the game. And that's because we're doing a CPU review where I like to see the max CPU performance. If I'm testing a GPU, then I will max those settings out because then that will be the maximum performance from the graphics card. So since this is a CPU review, I do like to drop the settings down at 1080p and it also has relevance for me personally where I feel like I can help recommend CPUs to competitive gamers who wanna get the highest frames possible for competitive play, which does have some relevance in the real world. But that aside, the next title we've got here is Call of Duty Cold War. We're playing on the raid map and we're playing just versus bots, but we're doing a very consistent benchmark to keep it apples to apples. In other words, we're doing the same test on all these CPUs and we're getting a really good result here from the 5800X on AMD side and then on the 12600K that actually got beaten by the AMD counterparts in this title on DDR4 and also DDR5 memory. Now, I did do a recent video on DDR4 versus DDR5 on the 12600K because I feel like some people wanna know if there's a difference to be had. And I actually found no difference in the real world when comparing these two different memory architectures on the 12600K, which does support both. Then moving on to F1 2020, here's where we had a really tight race, so to speak, for the finish. And here's where the i5 came out on top of the previous Gen i5, as well as the Ryzen 5 counterparts, only by a very small margin. And then moving on to New World, this is where the Ryzen 5600X and 5800X scored a counter blow against the i5-12600K, beating it in this particular title. Now you may be wondering why are they trading blows, the 12600K and the Ryzen 5 5600X, for example, in some of these titles. And it was funny because in my DDR4 versus DDR5 comparison, I overclocked the 12600K and that responded equally as well. So if you decide to overclock the 12600K, you can actually extract a lot of performance out of that, but more on that later. Next up here, we've got R2-D2, and we're scoring a victory again for the Ryzen 6 and 8 core CPUs over the 12600K and the 11600K at 1080p lower settings. Now, the 11900K, you may notice this pops up in the graphs. This CPU, I didn't like this. When this was first launched, I thought this was a useless CPU. I didn't recommend it to anyone. I said the 10900K was better. So I'm really only putting this CPU in here just for your information. I personally thought this CPU was a total waste of money. Then moving on to Borderlands 3, here's where we actually saw a neck and neck 
battle between the 5600X and the 12600K. It was like something out of a Gladiator film where you got the two Titans going up against each other and ultimately it was a very slight victory for the 5600X scoring one FPS over that of the 12600K. Though moving on to Far Cry 6, here is where that victory was short-lived for the Ryzen 5 5600X where the 12600K did give it a so-called smackdown in this title. Now for the DDR4 memory used in this comparison, I was using 3600 megahertz Corsair Dominator CL18, but I did overclock that to CL16. And this was used across both Ryzen and the Intel DDR4 platforms. And then for the DDR5 on the 12900K, we use the Corsair Dominator 5200 megahertz. Now the final benchmark to pull up here is the Cinebench R23. Here's where the 12600K quite simply scores a home run and it's actually quite a sizable difference where these six performance cores, 12 threads, is doing a big job in terms of the heavy lifting. Now we're scoring over 17,000 points, which absolutely pummels the 5600X, it beats the 5800X, it beats the previous generation 11900K by a long shot. And then you've also got those four efficiency cores, which makes it a 10 core, 16 threaded CPU. Now the efficiency cores, this is that new design coming in from Intel with the P and the E cores, kind of similar to what ARM was doing on the mobile scene with their big and little cores. The efficiency cores are practically one quarter of the size of a performance core. And they're pretty much there just to take the light lifting off the performance cores so they can do the heavy lifting when it comes to benchmarks, especially like Cinebench R23. Now, when it comes to the base clocks and the turbo limits of the i5-12600K, you're looking at the base clocks of 3.7 gigahertz on the six performance cores, and then 2.8 gigahertz on the efficiency cores. And then for the PL2, which is essentially the turbo boost mode limit, which Intel is now disclosing, we have speeds of 4.9 gigahertz on the performance cores and 3.6 gigahertz on the efficiency cores, which when I was running Cinebench R23, I did see it hit 4.9 gigahertz on the single core. And then we also saw it hit 3.6 gigahertz on those efficiency cores. And then when it came to the all core speeds on the performance cores, that went up to 4.5 gigahertz. Though on that note of the 4.5 gigahertz, we were using 135 watts of direct power draw with hardware monitor which the PL1 limit is 125 watts, and then the PL2 limit is 165 watts. So there is still a little bit of headroom to extract out of this CPU. And here's where you can easily overclock this CPU to five gigahertz. At least that's what the sample here did with 1.38 volt in the BIOS. And here's where I scored over 18,000 points on Cinebench and the gaming performance figures also went up in tandem getting extra performance and really only a little bit of extra total system wattage. And the temperatures were still absolutely fine with the H159 Corsair Elite Capellex. Though with that information out of the way, it's time to give you guys a clean cut conclusion and who is the i5 12600k for and i think it's the most appealing out of intel stack so far i'm also waiting for something like say the i5 12400f and cheaper motherboards to come along but this cpu coming in at its price point offers a lot it's beating out the previous generation 11900k 10900k when it comes to that raw Cinebench performance. It's beating out AMD's six core 12 thread. It's even beating out the Ryzen 5 5800X. Even though both the six and the eight core from AMD can score victories in certain games over the 12600K, the 12600K I feel does have quite a bit of overclocking headroom that you can extract, especially out of the box versus the 5800X, even the 5600X, and also the 12900K. All those three CPUs I just mentioned, you will not get an extra 500 megahertz all core, absolutely no way, it's not happening. But with the 12600K, you can extract some extra performance, which does make it an appealing chip because of its cheaper price point. So to put things simple, I can definitely recommend the i5 12600K. It's a winner. Intel have produced a very strong lineup of CPUs finally with massive IPC gains. It's about time they did this because as we saw with 11th gen, that was very unappealing. And also when we saw with Ryzen, they were just constantly bringing the gains every year. And so it's great to see Intel come back now 
with a counter blow and that is definitely shaking up the market. And this CPU, I feel the 12600K is definitely gonna shake things up for enthusiasts as well. Very appealing chip at its price point, especially looking at the DDR4 combo with the DDR4 motherboards. Now you may be wondering what about the 12900K, at least from the testing I've done here, the 12900K is a better bin. That went up to 5.1 gigahertz, all cores out of the box and even jump to 5.2 single core boost without me doing anything. The 12600K, even though I could get it into Windows at 5.1 gigahertz all core, I just couldn't get it to run benchmarks. It kept crashing no matter how much voltage I pumped into this thing, it just wouldn't get the job done. So five gigahertz is where it did top out at, but it was very easy to get that overclock. Only took me actually a few minutes to obtain, but I will be looking into more overclocking and bringing you guys tutorials on both the DDR5 and the CPUs themselves. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and also let us know in the comments section below, are you liking the 12th gen chips? Are you liking the i5 12600K? Would you buy one? Are you in the market for one? Or would you rather buy a different CPU? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye. Yeah.